You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another interesting episode of Ask Drone You. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, good morning, good evening, and good day. Uh, my name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and uh, looking forward to this question. Another good one, interesting. I think uh, might be a lot of folks out there that will, uh, I don't know, be interested in what, what this uh, gentleman is asking about. So thank you for joining us, appreciate it. AskDroneU.com for your question, don't, uh, don't hesitate. Yeah, send those in and leave us a review if you would. We do greatly appreciate when uh, when you leave reviews. So thank you. Uh, that said, we've got a very interesting question today uh, about essentially mapping an entire city, which is interesting in itself because mapping an entire city might actually uh, be something that there's a significant industry that already exists that drone pilots real well, they, they may not be aware of. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about uh, the question as well, which is um, mapping an entire city and kind of, you know, getting uh, how to get the approval for that, which is actually a very interesting question in itself because of the time frame that we're in right now with the part 107 changes that just took place, etc. cetera. Um, it's, a, it's a very good question. So let's, uh, let's play that funky question. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, this is Ryan from Utah. Just looking for, in our in my local area, everything's Class G airspace and some little towns that might be wanting some more detailed maps than they can get through our state GIS service and some other things. But it brings the question to survey an entire town. What do you do about flying over people? What would be the process to get an approval to fly to do a mapping job for an entire town? Thanks, guys. Appreciate your podcast and your insights. Thanks and have a good day. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate you taking the time to uh, push the button and ask the question. Great, great to uh, hear from you. Um, so various things going on in this question. There's uh, obviously approvals is something that he's interested in, but um, probably just some strategy on how to about, go about making this happen too. For sure. Um, and before we go into that strategy about how to make this happen, just really quick, want to make it really evident to pilots out there um, that there are very large scale um, industrial and established companies who do aerial photogrammetry from planes. Um, I know it's a big thing in West Texas. I know it's a big thing here in the, in the South in general. That said, if this person is looking to map uh, something that um, is that large of an area, I would just say make sure that you are still competitive enough so that someone doesn't go to one of these larger aerial services. Because, uh, you know, it's funny, just yesterday, Bill and Ongood were texting me about this insane camera from phase one you know, 280 megapixel Nader camera. And then it's got four cameras that are oblique at 150 megapixels each. And, you know, the question comes, well, well you know, isn't, isn't that incredible for drone mapping? And the answer is, well, remember the rules of drone mapping, right? Visual line of sight. If you can't see below an, an awning, if you can't see below... Uh, below or around something, you're still not going to map it, right? Uh, so what I also loved about that particular advertisement for that phase one camera was the ergonomical handles for handling the camera. I thought that was great. <laughs> 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 uh, but anyway, long story short is, okay, so we got past the fact that there are large scale companies doing aerial mapping from planes to cover large swaths of areas uh, because it's just so much more efficient to do it that way than with a drone. Okay, so let's, let's just knock that out. One, make sure cost benefit analysis that you are competitive. Two, there is an opportunity for drones to provide much greater detail than those planes. Again, we're looking at facade data. We're talking about doors, windows, anything below an awning, anything that's covered below bridges, etc. All of that, uh, we can do so much better with drones. Okay, now that we've gotten past that point, how to actually get the approval to fly over uh, people, I'm guessing. Okay, first thing, Rob, that I want to touch really, really, really fast mm -hmm. is this whole ideology of uh, needing a waiver 
to complete this map because if the person had set up their flight lines so that they're always over, and let's just take this perfect example. Let's say that the the town is a grid, like most newer Mm -hmm. middle of nowhere towns, grids, okay? Then let's imagine that during some part of the day, you have the least amount of traffic, probably like the 10 to 11 hour or something like that. Okay. And then let's imagine that we we actually plan our flight lines to be over the center of the road. So you're never actually flying over a person, right? Or you're never actually flying over a car. Um, I think it's totally possible that in the right circumstances, you would not need a waiver because you would never fly over people. I mean, you're flying over buildings, rooftops, there's, you know, unless there's a person on the roof, et well, Even if you are flying over people, it's like for one second they call right? it transversing yes yeah. yes yes that and one. so okay so let's say that in the perfect situation you wouldn't need a waiver what if you're not in any other situation other than the perfect situation the next question is are you going to try to map the whole thing in one setting like do you need a beyond visual line of sight waiver or as i like to jokingly call them the extended visual <laughs> line of sight waiver because <laughs> that's really what it is uh and give you that daisy chaining ability right to do bigger mapping areas so that would be my first question is can you break this up into smaller projects that you don't need BVLOS because if you do need BVLOS well then guess what you are probably going to need a waiver for that on top of a waiver for transversing people or maybe you just get both waivers together long story short if I were to apply for a waiver to the FAA for whatever reason, I would essentially showcase that I'm planning my flight lines and autonomous mission to A, transverse cars and transverse roads and really focus on not flying over people's backyards or areas where people could be aggregating or congregating, right? That said, um, it's really important. It's really important to think about f- like planning the flight as a whole planning the autonomous mission. Can it be planned so that you're not transversing people, so that you're not transversing these things? Is it possible? And if so, what are the precautions that you are going to take as pilots and visual observers? Because you could, here's the thing. Do you really, I don't really believe you need a waiver to do this operation unless you were trying to do beyond visual line of sight. You would be essentially breaking up the mapping data sets uh, on different days so that way you do them at the same time to you match the shadows, et cetera. Um, but that said, um, I honestly don't believe that you would need a waiver because, you know, now that our, our mapping applications are as robust as they are, Let's say that you have the system set up where you've got a visual observer who's watching the drone, but you have an additional visual observer watching the camera feed like on a large screen, right? And as soon as you see maybe someone who's potentially coming into the flight line of the drone, you pause the mission. Let the person walk through and continue on the mission. Like if he's talking about small towns, it just really makes me wonder what is possible without a waiver, because the waiver process, it's really not systematic by any means. And waivers have been combined, et cetera. But if I'm the FAA uh, and I'm thinking like the FAA, and then I'm thinking like a drone pilot, what does the FAA want to see? How are you going to avoid those risks that you cannot fulfill for whatever reason? Yeah. In other words, what setup strategies do you have to mitigate something that happens. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And honestly, with the changes recently to remote ID and how flight over people and how transversing vehicles is really not a big deal anymore, um, it really makes you wonder, well, okay, what about between now and the time that transversing cars is not a big deal? What does that mean for drone pilots, right? Because we kind of alluded to that when we talked about the new uh, remote ID stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I got nothing. Yeah. Honestly, if you're filing a waiver, the waiver's got to include how you're going to mitigate risks. How are you not going to fly over people? What can you do to stop your drone from flying over people? How are you going to know if there are people, right? These are the things that you've got to think of, and these are the things that you've got to put in your waiver. Yeah. And so as it relates to actually accomplishing the mission, it's, is it not that big of a deal to break it up into separate jobs? Is that not really a... I don't think it would be a big deal. Would it take a lot more time? Yeah. But it's, I mean, you could do it. Yeah. 
So, but it, depending on the the size of the area, you're you're going to have to break it up anyways because of BVLS. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do something with that. I, I guess unless you got the waiver, but those are hard to get too as well, right? It's just they're not only hard to get, but they take a really long time, and it's really not a known known. It's like a unknown unknown because what are they going to ask for? And then the question comes back to, can you follow the rules and still get this job done? I would argue that you could. Yeah. 100%. Right. Without getting the waivers, you're saying. Yes. And again, yeah. if they're not flying BVLOS, you know, they're, they're doing small swaths at any given time, mm -hmm. which still you can get a lot done. Right. You know, and then makes you think, oh, how high is he flying? Right. And then, oh, okay, how big is the camera? And then, uh, like, you know, it just, there's so many things that go into it. Mm-hmm. Because, for example, let's talk about back to the waiver. Is the FAA going to be more uh, prone to approving something like a Phantom drone that has a very small uh, threshold for force when it hits something? Or are we talking about an Inspire, right, which weighs a lot more? And when it hits someone and it strikes something, it's going to cause a lot more damage. It's going to do some damage, yeah. So the FAA is like, okay, then now I need you to have a parachute on your drone, like the Indemnus one. And the reason that I'm just so anti-parachutes is I really don't believe in them. You know, people would say, well, that's such a, that's a erroneous thing to say. And it's like, no, because the flight characteristics of the drone completely change. You're changing the CG of the aircraft. You are inherently adding more risk to the operation by having a third party thing on your drone um the only time like the last time i saw a flyaway it was because someone had a parachute on top of their drone <laughs> so um yeah i just think that like if we really break down all the different things that are going into the decision making process from the faa i that's why i come back to is this really is this operation really waverable like, uh, i'm not really sure like if you want to fly over people then yeah if you want to fly beyond visual line sight, then yes. But I think this would also be a great opportunity to maybe bring on someone from the FAA to talk about this whole transversing cars. Oh, man, I would. Yeah, I think people would love to know more, I think de everyone, more details about that. I think everyone in their heart knows. <laughs> True. Uh, I think they know. <laughs> but hearing it from the horse's mouth, so to speak, would be great. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> because you don't want to be that one guy who knows in his heart and then all of a sudden FAA inspector shows up. Asking you. <laughs> Sticks an arrow in that heart. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I saw, I saw you transversing cars. You're like, well, uh, March 23, it's not a big deal. He's yeah, like, my yeah, heart but... told me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, um, I don't think we did a very technical, super detailed job of answering his question. But I think that's because there's more macro issues at heart as well. And... You know, if this is a waiver that you're really after, you know, check out the props program um, because I think that this is something that's better suited for the service that you can expect from the props program. So Yeah. All right. Anyway, well, that's going to do it for us today, guys and girls and gals and y'alls. Uh, my name is Paul. <laughs> my name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You.